This is Selma Schimmel for the Group Room at the ESMO 2012 Congress happening now in Vienna, where we are now joined by Professor Shell Oberg from the University Hospital in Uppsala, Sweden. Professor Oberg is also president of the European uh, Neuroendocrine Tumor Society. Welcome. Thank you very much. Can you please give us a little sort of biology background on neuroendocrine tumors and where or do they physically actually present in the body? These are unique tumors because they have a biology of uh, producing hormones. So they can also be called hormonal cancers. And they are usually slow growing and they can be uh, located wherever in the body. I have seen patients with them even in the ear. It's not related to endocrine glands at all because it's uh, related to the diffuse uh, uh, endocrine system. So they, most of them are based in uh, small intestine and also the second most common localization is the pancreas and also in the lungs. How do these tumors present? Some of them present with hormonal symptoms that can be flushing, redness in the face, they can be uh, presenting with diarrhea, abdominal pain, sometimes with low blood glucose, gastric ulcers, so they have many facets and uh, therefore uh, sometimes they are missed and they, uh, the patient got the correct diagnosis usually after three to five uh, years. Is one predisposed? Are there any contributing factors? No, we don't know any. There are some uh, inherited forms of neuroendocrine tumors uh, related to multiple endocrine neoplasias, but <coughs> usually most patients suffer from sporadic cases and we don't know exactly the uh, biology or the molecular genetics behind it. The incidence is how frequent? Seven per hundred thousand and uh, the prevalence is about 35 per hundred thousand. So because they are living long, you have uh, a high uh, number of patients uh, living for more 10, 15, 20 years with the disease. What about gender? It's equal distributed among men and women. Age group? The age group is around 50 to 60 years of age. I bet it may take some time before a doctor can finally get to the diagnosis. Yes, <clears throat> and therefore we try to educate most doctors nowadays. We have different courses in neuroendocrine tumors. And the best way to diagnose it is, of course, if you can measure different biomarkers because these patients secrete different hormones, peptides and amines, which can be used as uh, biomarkers. And we have one important biomarker, which is chromogranin A. And that this assay is available worldwide. So if you have the suspicion of a neuroendocrine tumor, please take chromogranin A as the first thing. Of course, if that is uh, increased, then the next step will be to try to localize the tumor. And that is with CT scans, MRIs, and nowadays with PET scannings. Very sensitive radioactive isotopes can be used to localize exactly the tumors, down to three millimeter. Is there a list of, of signs that you would be able to tell our viewers if they or a loved one repeated, repeatedly presented with such symptoms, how important it is that they get further evaluated? I can take it first for pancreatic nets. If <clears throat> the patient presents several times with low blood glucose, you should definitely consider an insulin producing tumor and you should look for high insulin levels. If a patient presents with increased number of uh, ulcers in the stomach or in the duodenum, please look for a Sollinger Ellison syndrome with a gastrin producing tumor. If the patient presents with flushing diarrhea, then look for a small intestinal tumor producing urinary uh, serotonin. So th there are symptoms that can directly correlate to a hormone production. How treatable is the illness? Today we have a lot of several options for, for, for um, treatment of these tumors. In previous days we just had chemo and that's it. Today we have a lot of new drugs, so-called targeted treatments, and two of them has been recently registered for pancreatic nets, that is sunitinib and uh, everolimus. Are there tumor m markers or 
biologic pathways that one can look for in the diagnosis of this cancer? We have started to learn more about the mTOR signaling pathways. And we know that uh, patients with low expression of some of the proteins in this signaling pathway are more prone to respond to the treatment with everolimus. So today is chemotherapy still considered a benchmark uh, or cornerstone rather in, in treatment in a combination with a the targeted therapy? I, I think in Europe <clears throat> it's still considered first-line treatment for most of the neuroendocrine tumor, pa particular pancreatic nets. But uh, more and more oncologists are starting to use these targeted agents and they are starting to use them alone but <clears throat> there are now data coming showing that you have a good effect of combining chemo with a targeted agent. But we have no randomized trials so far for that. For treatment, I would like to add uh, that we have a very specific radioactive treatment for these uh, tumors because they express somatostatin receptors on the uh, tumor cells. And these receptors can bind radioactive agents, somatostatin analogs, and we can label them with lutetium or yttrium-90. And uh, we have very uh, good results in Europe because it's only available in Europe. It's a radioactive isotope bind through a chelator to the uh, peptide called octreotide or octreotate. And this goes directly to the somatostatin receptor type 2. How do you administer that? Uh, injection, infusion. Is there anything else that you would like to add about this disease? I would like to say that the survival and also quality of life has significantly improved over the last decades. And in some of the patients, even with metastatic disease, they can live for more than 15 years uh, in median. And that is something that has to be compared with uh, two years when I started in 1980. Professor Shell Ober from the University Hospital, Uppsala, Sweden, President of the European Neuroendocrine Tumor Society. Thank you very much for helping us understand more about endocrine tumors here in the group room. Thank you very much. It has been a pleasure to discuss my favorite topic, neuroendocrine tumors.